Good afternoon, Facebook family and friends. Welcome to a Tuesday midday moment with Pastor Ponder. It's a joy to have you here. Uh, we missed you yesterday. Most of you might have picked up on that. I had a few folks respond to that little uh, sort of a impromptu little deal over there at my, my Aunt Magdalene over there in North Carolina. And I, I went back and looked at it and noticed that the, the quality was a little sketchy. And I apologize for that, but the where we were there in, in Western North Carolina, the internet was kind of sketchy, a little minimal. Uh, but uh, we, had, we had the best day. Uh, if you saw some of the pictures, I, I've told the story often of, of how uh, the Lord saved me and then I can take you, you know, within that close uh, to where I knelt at an old time altar and ask the Lord to be my savior. And uh, I went within that yesterday. The building has not changed. Uh, is remarkable how that uh, 40, 48 years after the fact, the little white church by the side of the road is still there and still doing ministry and hasn't changed that much. And uh, it was a blessing to be able to be in that room and stand there with my dad at that altar and uh, and hope he saw those pictures and, uh, and noticed what they were and appreciated what they were and then right down the road where, where I was baptized shortly after that. But anyway, it is good to be home. Had a great visit with some good friends, but glad to be home and, and, and back into to routine, I guess you might say. So let's uh, open the word, the word of prayer, and I've, I've got a, a new psalm for you today. Let's pray together. Father God, I praise you for another beautiful morning. I thank you, Lord, for every good gift that you've blessed into my life. I thank you, Father, for protection and uh, a great day of travel yesterday. But I thank you, Lord, most of all, I thank for Calvary and for the salvation that you afforded me, Lord, through the death of your son. And I thank you, Father, for the legacy, for the spiritual heritage that you've blessed me with. And, and I don't take that for granted. I don't take it lightly. I thank you for the blessings of the internet that I can come into the homes and the, maybe the workplace or at least the cell phones of wherever folks find themselves today. I ask you what you've got in the thoughts. Would you please use me in a way that would be an encouragement to your people? Guide every thought that comes through my mind. Let it be ordained, I, I pray. Uh, by you in your presence. I ask a blessing on many that our heart goes out to today. Continue to bless Miss Barbara Wright and we think of, of um, all the others that are walk, walking through situations. We think of Brother Charles Jones. Would you, would you please bless him? And I pray God that you'd provide uh, those folks that need physical uh, provision outside of medical needs. Uh, I think of folks that need a, that, that have got car problems and folks that have uh, issues around the house and financial worries. We know that you're the God of provision. Our God will provide. You are Jehovah Jireh. And we, we lean on that and we trust you for that. I pray a blessing on those that are watching today. Well, I pray God that you'll be with um, all those wherever they may be, that you'll be the comfort, you'll be the blessing and the provision that they're desperate for in their lives. So bless these few minutes together. Allow me, Lord, just to speak a word of encouragement and I'll gladly praise you for it. Forgive my sin as I pray every time. I don't want anything, Father, to be between me and you that would hinder me from being used by you today. So all the sin of my heart, sin of my mind, I confess that and I pray for I pray for, for forgiveness. And I gladly praise you for it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 I want to sing a song for you this morning. It's, it's a, a song by Jeff and Sherry Easter, but I've heard other groups do it too. But it, it has a simple message that I believe all of us as God's people can, can testify to. It just simply says, I need you more today than I did yesterday. Let it bless your heart today. I need you more today than I did yesterday. Mountains are higher. Rivers seem wider. decisions I can't make on my own. And there are trials I can't face all alone. But you said you'd walk with me down life's troubled road. 
road and you said come unto me I'll bear your heavy load I need you more today than I did yesterday mountains are higher rivers seem wider I need I wake up in the morning and I fear to face the day. Let me feel your gentle hand leading the way. Yesterday has come and gone with those trials far behind, but I'm ever are higher, rivers are wider, I need you more today than I did yesterday, help me remember I need you more today, help me remember I need you more today. me remember I need you more today I like that line in the first verse it says there's decisions I can't make on my own there are trials I can't face all alone but you said you'd walk with me I like that song I um, I come today not beginning a new series I'm still trying to seek the Lord's face as to what our next extended series in our midday moment might be I've got a couple of books on my desk now that I'm kind of reading through and sort of pondering, I guess you could say. Uh, so for, for a day or two, it's just going to be sort of some standalone, uh, devotional kind of um, uh, encouragement kind of words until God gives me the, the direction on our next big teaching series, I guess. Uh, but, but I want to take you back and look at a very familiar story, the story of David and Goliath. And here's, here's where uh, the encouragement or, or this the inspiration, I guess, for this thought. The other day I subscribed uh, to a to a, a man and wife on YouTube. If you watch YouTube videos, you know how the, you, you, you hit subscribe and, and their videos, their new videos will pop up um, when, when they film it. Anyway, I guess I should remember their name if I'm subscribed to their channel, but their name just left me. But they're walking through the Holy Land. They're, they're, they're traveling through Israel and, and the surrounding areas and, and visiting biblical sites and visiting these places that uh, the Bible talks about and they're seeing them in real life today. And I've been encouraged by them because they're, they're walking through some of those same places that Miss Tammy and I were blessed to go in our trip to the Holy Land. And one day, just last week, they were, they were in the Valley of Elah where that battle between David and Goliath happened. And and we were fortunate to stand on that same place where they were. And I, and I was watching their videos, and I was like, you know, hey, y'all, I've been there, I've been there, that kind of thing. Well, I, I got to, I got to thinking back about that story, and, and, and I got to thinking what a, what a, a blessing it's always been to me. It's been, it's been taught by countless Sunday school teachers, and been played it on felt boards and, and church plays from every possible angle. We've tried to preach it. But I, but I want to I want to go back just just for a very brief little moment today, bring the story back into your mind, and I want to throw at you. That's a very funny way of saying that when I'm talking about stones. I don't know why I said it. I want to I want I want to throw at you. I, I, I want to I want to suggest to you a little bit about those five smooth stones that David picked up out of that out of that brook. I, I started to go dig mine out. So I actually brought me five. I went into that brook that it's all dried up now. Uh, seasonally, it dries up, and and I brought home with me five smooth stones from that brook there at the Valley of Allah, and uh, they're just a just a blessing to me. But I, I want to suggest to you 
uh, what those stones can mean in our lives today, facing all that you're facing, all of the trials and tribulations that we're going through as a as families, as a church, as a nation, you as individuals with all your medical worries and, and other physical needs and emotional needs. But uh, you, you, you know that story. You know it well as I do, how that, that David turned out to be the hero of the story, uh, or more importantly, God's hero, uh, the youngest son of, of Jesse from down Bethlehem Way. His only job, well, main job in, in life was, was tending to his daddy's sheep and the Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter number 16 that he had been chosen by God, though, uh, and, and was, was anointed by Samuel to be the next king of Israel. The Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. Well, if David is the hero, then every good story needs a villain. And, uh, and you know our villain. He's described very clearly there in 1 Samuel chapter 17. Uh, the, the champion of the Philistines, Goliath from Gath. Nine feet tall, had a helmet of brass and a, and a coat of mail that weighed 128, 125 pounds, depending on the math. He had brass shin guards, had a bronze javelin that he carried in a sheath between his shoulders. He had a, had a big long spear that the tip was made out of iron and weighed 15 pounds, had an attendant to carry his shield for him. So undoubtedly an awesome sight there glistening in the afternoon sun as he cries out, challenges the people of God and he, he says that he stood there and taunted them uh, for 40 days uh, he, he stood there and taunted the children of Israel the army of God for 40 days and challenged them to send your best send your best and whoever wins the battle that will, will be the slaves to the other you'll, you'll be the slaves to the to the to, to the victor well somewhere towards the end of those days those 40 days, you know, David's sent by his dad. Jesse goes down, takes him some food for his brothers who were in the army, and, and he finds the entire Israelite army cowering in fear before Goliath. And, and I know I'm, I'm telling you a story that you, are, you all are intimately familiar with, but we're going to get there at the end just in a second. Uh, verse number 33 um, uh, of chapter 17, uh, I, I love the story where, where David basically stands up and and says, why don't somebody go down there and, and, and shut him up kind of a thing. Um, and, and Saul uh, hears David's words. He said, I'll go. And he, he tries to put his armor on him. And David says, I can't, I can't fight in this kind of armor. He was all clunky on him, didn't fit him right. And um, in verse number 37 of 1 Samuel 17, um, David stands up and says, I'll, I'll take care of this, this burden and what we see in that story is, is that God lifted David up, but David is quick to lift up God and give him all the glory and the praise. So, so, so David chooses, in so many words and by his actions, he chooses God's presence over Saul's armor. And I've always loved that picture because there's things in this world that your friends and your family will, will tell you that are that are necessary for survival, necessary for success in this world. But to a child of God that has a, a life-altering relationship with the God of this universe, the things of this world will prove to be a burden to you. They'll prove to be a weight to you. That's what, that's what David says. He says, I, I can't do this. These, this stuff, I can't do battle with this kind of stuff hanging on me. In essence, what David does is what, is what Hebrews 12, 1 says, to lay aside every weight and the sin which easily besets us. And let's run with patience the race that is set before us. So David chooses instead to take into battle that that he was most comfortable with. And here's where we begin to get into a great application of this very familiar story. He takes into battle with him that that he's most comfortable with, that that he's most accustomed to. And you go read it. You'll, you'll find it there again in 1 Kings chapter number 17. He takes his staff, he takes his shepherd's bag, and he takes his sling. His staff was the source of his stability when he's walking across, you know, hard ground. That was that was something he could lean on. His shepherd's bag was his sustainer, that that, that fed him, that that sustained his physical needs. And his sling was, of course, his weapon. So we see the beautiful picture there a glorious application of David's life. We go in to battle 
carrying those things that we're most comfortable with. We need that that's offering stability. We need that as our sustainer and our weapon. Of course, the spiritual truths there, I think, are very, very clear. We know that everywhere that David went, based on what we read back in 1 Samuel 16, the Spirit of God was with David. The Spirit of God was his stability, was his sustainer, was the weapon that he was desperate for. So now we find that David proceeds into battle on nothing more than the strength of God, the power of the Word of God. And I want to read this for you. Miss Tammy, I've done it again. I left my Bible laying on that table. Miss Tammy's going to have to dig my Bible out for me. I, I, was, I, I just left it laying on the other table over there. I don't have to get up and go find my Bible. So I've got my, my behind-the-scenes tech crew. But I want to read you 1 Samuel chapter 16. And I, and I want to I want to let this word bless your heart today. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 16, in verse number 13, Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. And you jump forward into chapter number 17, and I want you to watch what David says. It says the Bible says he took, this is when he's actually going to meet Goliath. He took his staff in his hand, and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in his shepherd's bag, which he had in his scrip, and his sling was in his hand. And the Philistine came and drew near unto David, but the man that bare the shield went with him. And the, the, the Philistine Goliath goes on to say, Am I a dog that thou come to me with with um, with a staff and with staves? And he cursed David by his gods. And David says to, Phil, to the Philistine in verse 45, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defiled. So you know that story well. David stops, picks him up five smooth stones, puts them in his bag. And, and, I, and I'd like to submit to you today for this Tuesday midday moment that those five smooth stones represent five very real very attainable sources of power that you can have in your Christian life. And I, and I want to very quickly throw these at you. Again, no pun intended. But I want you to remember, David carried into battle that that he was most accustomed to carrying. But now, in addition to those things, he stops along the way, stops by God's brook of provision, and receives five things necessary to win that particular battle. He was confident of the power of God. God had proven himself faithful. He had killed the lion, killed the bear, and you know, to save daddy's sheep. So he knew he had the skill set. God knew that he had been facing smaller enemies before this thing. Snakes, scorpions, whatever he faced out there in the wilderness. But he knew, God knew that a formidable enemy like Goliath that he was about to face, God had pressed upon the heart of David to stop along the way and retrieve some reinforcements to retrieve some things specifically tailored for that battle. And I present these to you today so that you can find assurance and victory in your Christian walk, regardless of however the enemy comes against you, whether it's discouragement or depression or temptation or fear. Jot these down. Jot down these five smooth stones and be blessed by them today. Can I, can I suggest to you that maybe stone number one is courage? Courage. Isaiah chapter 12 verse 2 tells you, child of God, that God is your salvation. I will trust and not be afraid for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. Because God is my strength, I will not be afraid. I'll not be afraid of the enemy's size or the enemy's stature. I'll not be afraid of the vile language that he might use or the behavior that he may exhibit. I'll not be afraid of the enemy's mighty army that he comes at me. Being a youth was no hindrance to David because he knew who it was that he represented. I mean, let, me write, let me show you this one. David writes this. If I, can, I think it's Psalm 27. You look at Psalm 27. The Lord is my light, my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, come upon me to eat my flesh, they stumble and fail. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this I will be confident. 
So someone needs to take a stone, ask the Lord to give you a stone of courage, place that into a bag that you're taking into battle. Why was David able to disregard the rebuke of his family and friends and proceed boldly into battle? Because he knew his God was able. He knew that his God was more than capable for what he was about to face. So one is courage. Two is loyalty. I love the story of David. He's loyal to his father. He's loyal to his king. He's loyal to his people, God's people. He's loyal to his trusted and proven God. So I think there's a there's a there's a, a close connection between stones two and three. One, as we said, is courage. Two is loyalty. Three is devotion. Young man that he was, David was devoted to the God of Israel. He was devoted to the people of Israel. He was devoted to God's word. Devoted to the work of God. Devoted to the to the leadership appointed uh, by God over the nation of Israel. He was devoted to give all that he had to his master. So in our stone, our little bag now, we've got a stone of courage. We've got a stone of loyalty. We've got a stone of devotion. I want to add to that a stone of love. God loved David and David loved him. He loved God. He loved God's people. He loved the land that God had promised and provided to the nation of Israel. He loved the cause enough to give his own life for it. Love is what motivates us as children of God. And love will be a tool in your arsenal that will bless you uh, when you need it the most. And finally, number five, we'll call it faith. The faith that David had was bigger than any enemy. His faith prompted him to believe that his efforts would be honored by God. He believed God's people had a job to do and they would, they would win the day. See, David believed that God would hear the prayers of a lonely shepherd boy. When it came time to face the enemy, David was ready. He was more than ready. And I want you to look at this. I want you to listen at verse number 48. It came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hasted and ran towards the army to meet the Philistine. I love that. He, he, not, not only because he had prepared for that battle beforehand could he run and face the enemy. Think about all those soldiers hiding behind those walls, and all of David's brothers and all the other soldiers. When David hit the field, though, there was no waiting in ambush for the enemy to come strolling by, no waiting for the enemy to come by and find him. No, David took the fight to the enemy. He ran towards the army of the Philistines. And David put his hand in his bag, took out a stone and slang it and smote the Philistine in his forehead that the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth. In the heat of the battle, David reaches into that bag. He had stopped by the brook of provision and brought five stones into that battle. And I want you to not miss the point that it only took one. It only took one stone to bring down that giant. David had five smooth stones at the ready, but this particular battle only required one. And I think there's a couple of great assurances that we can take away from that. Not every battle is going to require all of your stones. God alone is able to, to show us and then give us what we need for the battle. And oftentimes God will actually give you more than you actually need. <laughs> David stopped and picks up five stones, but he only needed one. How many can testify to God's provision is oftentimes above and beyond that that you ever imagined. You may be in a place today in your life where you feel like your pouch is empty. You feel if you had to go into battle today or face another giant, you just don't have anything left in the tank. You don't have anything left in your bag of tricks. You've used up all of your stones. You've lost the courage to stand for God. Maybe your loyalty has come into question. Maybe your devotion has wavered of late. Maybe your love is lacking or your faith is being stretched to the max. On your way into battle this afternoon or the rest of this week, whatever the battle you're facing, on your way into battle, 
stop by the brook of God's provision and allow him to restock your supply. Say, Father, I'm, I'm facing a battle I can't do by, on my own. There are decisions I can't make on my own, as the songwriter said. There are trials I can't face all alone. But you said you'd walk with me down life's troubled road. And you said, come unto me and I'll bear your heavy load. You need to trust him. And realize that you need him more today than you did yesterday. And tomorrow, you'll need him more again tomorrow. So stop by. Spend some quiet time with him. Say, Father, I need you more today to face this battle because I don't want to walk in and face it by myself. Amen. Amen. That's a good word. Hey, for those of you that call New Salem home and, and know Brother Tom McCurry, in case you've not heard, his funeral will be Wednesday night. Wednesday night from 5 to 7, receiving friends there at Bill o Taylor in a service at 7 o'clock. So with that in mind, there will not be any evening services at New Salem this week on Wednesday night. Uh, so we can all go and support Janine and the kids and the grandkids. So make note of that. Come, uh, come show your love to that great family. And he'll be buried here at the New Salem Cemetery uh, Thursday morning at 11 o'clock. So if you need any more information about that, uh, reach out to me let me know. All right? Amen. Have a great afternoon. May the Lord bless you and make his face to shine on you. And I look forward to seeing you on Wednesday for another midday moment. Bye-bye.